had a good time at Aerosmith, what I remember from the concert. And, uh, you know, we drove back. I think we came over to George Washington. I just remember we went through Uptown. And it must have been about 1.30 in the morning, New Year's Eve, 1980. And we're driving through Uptown North Bergen, going downtown on Kelly Boulevard. And we had just passed the 91 Street Bend, shooting down like 85th Street past uh, Roma Pizza and all of my favorite pizza there. And as we get to a bar named Mareg's, the people, the bar was closed. So that's, it had to be after fucking three. The bar was closed. So sorry about that. And as we pulled up, we didn't, we weren't going to go into the bar or anything. We were just driving on Kennedy Boulevard. But as we pulled up at that light at 80, whatever the street is, 85th Street, there was a, a car that hit a pole. Smoke was coming out of it, and there was maybe another bystander who was there to, who had gotten there. We were probably either second or third on the on the fucking street on Kennedy Boulevard. Mike then he pulled over, and I remember that the car that we were in an RX-7, and the car that the people were driving was an RX-7, a Mazda. Anybody, if anybody remembers a Ma- RX-7, it was basically a glorified casket for two people that's that's all it is you get hit in the fucking you get hit in the rx7 guys they're just burying you in the fucking rx7 like this why should they even take you out and put you in a, it's a waste of time so as i got out of the i got out of the car because it was an accident and there was smoke coming out of the hood of the car and the car had gone into a pole but it was right down the middle of the hood like he hit it straight on 50 50 on both sides when I looked in the driver's side. I just saw somebody slumped over, and there was blood on the windshield. The windshield was blasted and stuff. But the girl that he was with was crying. I didn't know the ages. You know, I could I could be wrong. 20, let's just say 20, 18, I don't know, around there. I didn't know the person. They were not from North Bergen. And, you know, as we, I got, shocked by the ambulances and the police that pulled up while we were looking and they're like get away from the scene get away from the scene we were right there guys and they're evaluating they're pushing everybody back like me and the other two or three people they're pushing us back and they're going in the car and they you know open up the passenger side the driver's side and i heard them say he's gone like he's gone i remember like it just took the wind out of my fucking sails i was like what the fuck he's gone and then they tried to open up the passenger side, and that's the side that was stuck. I don't know what, what you know, a car collapsed in the front. And they, they were trying to open up the passenger side, and they couldn't get it, but they had a moonroof. So the guy got on top of the car, the fireman got on top of the car, and he ripped the moonroof open, and he's yelling down or whatever. And then I remember they gave him a saw. And as he was cutting 10 minutes later or something, now it's a full fucking accident scene. They've already yelled that he's dead, and... I'm on acid. I need this shit. I'm on a fucking tremendous hit of fucking acid. And it's starting to, you know, it's kicking. What the fuck am I telling you? It's fucking kicking. So, you know, I'm hearing buzzes and, and, and ambulances and fucking, uh, it was like a jaws of, life. jaws of life, but they were cutting through the car. You know, you could see the sparks and shit. So I'm tripping and I could hear her yell. I could hear her yell like, ah. Help, help, I can't move my leg or something. I don't know exactly. It was fucking for 30 years ago, 40 fucking years ago. But the moral of the story, that's why Papa don't like to do dick on New Year's. That stuck with me like a cheap fucking suit. I still remember getting the car. I didn't know her. I didn't know him. I was young. My mother had just died maybe two months earlier. I was in fucking hell as it was. I had just gotten over one of the worst nights of my life, maybe two nights earlier, and now this shit. And I'll never forget that I made like a like a fucking decision right there. Like I'm not drinking because I'm. The other thing I remember is the fireman taking out a bottle of vodka, like a Wolfschmidt vodka, and had maybe two inches left, and they took it. So they were drinking. So with the acid and the fucking lights and the whole fucking thing, I'm like. Doesn't look like I'll be fucking partying anymore. You know, I was just, I had that incident and then something happened in 83 and I was like, you know what? 
It's not worth it because you got to pay attention on New Year's Eve. I was even scared driving back home. It was a fucking 10-minute ride, but I was scared driving home that night. Not scared, like, but just going, Jesus Christ, got to keep my eyes open for some drunk cocksucker. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the thing you're scared of the most is getting whacked by a drunk dude or whacking somebody yourself if you're high or something. So I got home, and, and I was happy, and that's been the model for me. Like, guys, I even hate going out on New Year's for, to do comedy. When I did comedy on New Year's, I missed the Ice House because I would do the 7.30 show, and you're you're in your car at a quarter to nine. You go to whatever party you want. You go to whatever dinner you want. I like doing New Year's early. That shit of counting down like fucking Dick Clark. I'm not good with the fucking countdown. I'm not good with those countdowns at all. I just want to get the fuck out of there. So, But I'm happy it's a new year. You know, I always keep... I don't know if, if my happiness is for the holidays or if my happiness is always for the new year. No matter what position I've always been in, in my life, there's always something that it, that's excited you about the new year. Like you're like, okay, my life's going to change. This is going to happen. I'm going to lose 80 pounds. I'm going to fucking meet a woman. You know, you have all these fucking goals, you know. But it's the biggest, I think the biggest problem I made as a kid, and I know people make it for a fact, who I made for many years, is the mistake of thinking that things are just going to change. Like, guys, and I'm the king of that shit. Things are just going to change. It's a new year. Don't worry about nothing. Your bills are going to go away. Somebody's going to just give you a check. You know, somebody's going to give you a car. Whatever. You're going to meet a girl. girl's going to knock on your door naked, and it's going to come in. That's what you're thinking. You know, this is my year to hit the fucking lottery. This is my year to win the fucking contest at work. It's always like a game of chance. I, I didn't like it as a game of chance. I really didn't. It's so weird when I, I think New Year's, like, uh, when I first got off Coke in 2008 was the first New Year's that my mind looked at it different. You know, when you when you have an addiction or you have some fucking, uh, what do they call it, like a vice, you know, you always think that success is to get money to make that vice come in more. Like if you like hookers and, you know, you like fucking hookers, like this is a kid on my Patreon, that's like I'm eight days without fucking a hooker. You know, what the fuck are you talking about, guy? You know, what the fuck are you talking about? But it's, hey, listen, vices are vices. It could be Viking, it could be Xanax, it could be Coke, weed, whatever. So... Yeah.